Well, there, I'm Sergeant Hoops with the County Police Department. You know why I stopped you today, sir? Well, uh, was it to learn more about Roanoke County's Traffic Enforcement Division for this episode of Civic Service? Running radar. We're gonna have a conversation. Right. Screeching tires. And making traffic stops. Do you know why I stopped you today, ma'am? It's all just another day on the job with the Roanoke County Police Traffic Division. On this episode of Civic Service, find out just what it takes and one, two, to keep our streets safe and hopefully prevent someone's worst day. We meet up with Sergeant Spencer Hoops as he's coordinating a traffic safety checkpoint. Sergeant Hoops, so you are over the traffic division for Roanoke County. What does that mean? So our traffic unit, we are primarily responsible for doing the traffic enforcement, making traffic stops summons his warnings of that thing, DUI enforcement, mm -hmm. uh, commercial motor vehicles uh, enforcement, doing safety inspections on those vehicles. Uh, from the enforcement side, we go to the education side. We're doing traffic safety presentations, the schools and businesses. And then the reactive side of that is making, uh, making us available for investigations, traffic mm -hmm. crash investigations right. of a more serious nature where people have been seriously injured or killed. So today we're conducting a license and safety checkpoint. And the purpose of this checkpoint is uh, you know occupant protection make sure people are wearing their seat belts uh they've got their kids in child safety seats like they're supposed to so there's safety aspects while they're driving down the road uh, of mm -hmm. course we have the opportunity to have conversations conversations with them about other aspects of traffic safety like you know, not being on their phone while they're driving and right. and you know making sure their vehicles are inspected they've got their license valid things of that nature uh -huh. here in neighborhoods like we've got today here uh, near brookside park um, it's a safe place for our officers to be. There's plenty of good sight line as traffic's coming through, so traffic can see our officers, officers can see the traffic coming through, and they're typically not going at a very high rate of speed either, so it's safe for all the folks to be out here on the roadway uh, and for us to have that interaction. It's interesting, you, you're almost looking at it more as a officer visibility standpoint than, than actually safety enforcement today, right? And it, that is pretty much what checkpoints um, have become if you look at some of the data and some of the statistics from checkpoints you find that you're really not catching a whole lot of violators um, mm -hmm. especially at night when you're doing a, a sobriety checkpoint right. you're, you're not catching a whole lot of duis at a particular location and and again it's not so much we're trying to catch everyone that drives down the road it's educating the people about remember have a plan when you drive or, or when you're when you're going to be consuming alcohol so that you are safe out on the roadway and know that they they could be out there so we want to plan accordingly for that all right, let's talk about what's going on right here in front of me. Uh, you have a car that pulls up, the officer approaches the, the driver, and what is the officer gonna say? So the officer uh, introduces themselves, you know, I'm, I'm officer so-and-so at the Roanoke County Police Department. Um, they explain to the driver what we're doing here. We're conducting a license checkpoint today, and just need to see your driver's license. Uh -huh. And we look at that driver's license, we take that driver's license at, at face value. They've uh -huh. got it with them as they're required to by law. And unless it's showing expired, we, take it that it's valid and good to go uh, and provided there's no other said noticeable uh, infraction they're not wearing their seatbelt or they drove into the checkpoint and they're on their phone or their vehicle has got an expired inspection or there's some uh, right. critical safety violation with their vehicle then we would pull them off to the side and okay. have further discussion. So Officer Hoops, what would you do if there was a reason or suspicion to, uh, to pull me out of the car? For instance, uh, uh, the smell of alcohol or, or something suspicious in, in the car? Certainly, if we had uh, reason to believe that you'd been drinking that night or under the influence of alcohol, have you step out of the vehicle and perform a series of standardized field sobriety tests. Uh, what are a few of those steps? We look at the horizontal gaze nystagmus test, the nine step walk and turn test, and the one leg stand test. The first is called the horizontal gaze nystagmus test. It's where we're checking your eyes. And place that away from the face, and you're gonna follow that with your eyes and your eyes only. Okay. Keeping your head still. Do you understand? Got it. All right, so I'm gonna check for a few things here in the eyes, making sure that there's no uh, potential for brain injury or anything like that. Okay. And I'm gonna start making a motion here, keeping your head still, just moving your eyes, just moving your eyes, okay? So I'm watching that eye motion right there. Remember, keeping your head perfectly still. All right. It's tough to do. We would like to see a minimum of four clues. If we see four out of the six, the odds are very significant, about 87% that that person is gonna be impaired above the legal limit. Sure. And that's just off one test, but we don't stop at one test. 
Well, I'm impressed that there, there are so many different steps that you as an officer have to keep in your head. Keep straight, what are the indicators, what are the tests? Uh, it, it is a massive amount uh, of, of knowledge that you have to have going into a stop like this. The Roanoke County Police Department is hiring for the March 2022 Police Academy class, featuring a multi-step career pay increase program, a take-home car, fixed shifts with flexible scheduling, paid physical fitness time, great retirement and health benefits, and a wide variety of specialty units. To find out more, contact the department or visit RoanokeCountyVA.gov and click the Jobs tab. Roanoke County, a great place to live, play, and work. So you've just completed two checkpoints today. What mm -hmm. were the results? So our checkpoints today, uh, we're out here two locations for about a total of four hours. I had eight officers uh, working these locations today. Um, we interacted with uh, the first checkpoint, we stopped 65 vehicles that came through our checkpoint. The second location, we saw 209 vehicles come through. Um, and from those checkpoints, we saw about 25 roughly um, citations that were issued, uh -huh. uh, summonses and warnings for various violations that came through. Overall, successful day so far? Uh, absolutely. Everybody came away safe. There were no injuries, no crashes occurred, and, and hopefully the public left with a little bit more uh, education on, on roadway safety. But your day's not done quite yet. I'm going to have the privilege of hopping in the car with you and seeing what it's like to be on traffic patrol. Or is that what it's called? Just, yep, just on patrol. We're going to go uh, run some radar here for a little bit in a couple of locations and uh, see if there's uh, any other infractions, things like that, that we observe. All right, let's hop in. All right, we're out on patrol, and you were telling me, although your position's fairly administrative, this is where you'd rather be, right, Officer Hoops? That's, that's correct. I like to get out from behind the desk as, as much as possible, and I think that I have a, a better opportunity of, of having that effect, changing that driving behavior, being out visible uh, like this, as opposed to being in an office setting. You clearly like what you do, don't you? Very much, yes. Hi oh, there. I'm Sergeant Hoops with the County Police Department. Do you have your driver's license, ma'am, and your vehicle registration? Do you know why I stopped you today, ma'am? Do you know you can't be talking on your phone while you're driving, right? Let me ask you this. Is there a reason you're not wearing your seatbelt today? Did you head it on coming down the road? Very good, ma'am. We appreciate that. Thank you. Let me go check the information. I'll be right back with you. We'll get you on your way, okay? All right. So what did you just do there? So while I was waiting at the stoplight back there, I observed this vehicle pass by and the driver was holding her cell phone in her right hand up to her ear. Uh, and with the new law that was passed actually in July of 2020 and went into effect January 1 of 2021, it is illegal to have that telephone or that handheld communication device in your hand at all while you're driving. A few months back, we kind of moving with our strategic plan, utilizing more uh, technology mm -hmm. to kind of streamline job, make things a little bit more, um, <clears throat> more efficient. Uh, we've begun using uh, the e-citations. So instead of handwriting a warning or handwriting a summons, uh, we use the tablet right here. Um, it makes the, the paperwork a little more legible for some officers. Uh, but it also instantly uploads the information to the cloud, to the courts, to records. What I have here today is a summons for being on the phone, okay? They said it's dangerous, that's why they make the law that, and you're actually getting ready to head around the corner into a construction zone, so got to make sure we don't have that phone in our hand and we're paying attention. I'm going to get your signature right here, ma'am. After our first traffic stop, Sergeant Hoops took the time to describe radar, how it works, how it's deployed in the Roanoke County fleet of patrol vehicles, and how, with time and training, an officer can spot a speeding vehicle without a radar gun. With, with our vehicles, all of our March patrol cars, all of our uniform patrol vehicles have radars installed in the vehicles. Mm -hmm. In addition to the radars installed in the vehicles, we've got a couple of other devices. Uh, we've got a handheld radar, which I actually have sitting beside you here. Okay. Um, now, do you use a combination of the car radar and the handheld radar? Uh, I do. Um, for the most part, the in-car radar, you've got to be sitting parallel to the road. So I'm going to need a wide shoulder someplace that I can pull off and be parallel to read the traffic. Oh. Um, if I'm sitting perpendicular to the road, you know, I, can't, I can't get the angle with the radar, mm -hmm. so I'm going to have to use the handheld so that I can get traffic coming towards me. So you are perpendicular to the road? Correct. And uh, with that, you would most likely use the handheld? I the... would, yes. Okay. Uh, may I give it a try? Absolutely. What do I do? Is it turned on? 
Look on the, you have anything <laughs> on the screen? It says power. On the that screen there? Power hold? Yep, you're good. <clears throat> when you press the, the trigger on the front pointing towards the traffic, okay. it's when it's gonna give you a reading. Okay, so when you're looking at that particular model, it's gonna display the number, so that's obviously their speed. Okay. Beside the number, it's giving you a letter. It's gonna have either an A or a T. The A means that traffic is going away from you. Okay. The T means that's traffic coming towards you. So as you're just you're you're running radar here, you see a car that's coming, that white SUV. It's T, so it's towards me. Mm -hmm. Just after Sergeant Hoops took over operation of the radar, he spotted a car speeding, and we were oh, off Christ. for another traffic stop. So you're going up to the red one up there. That is correct. So red Ford SUV. Hey there, I'm Sergeant Hoops with the County Police Department. Do you have your driver's license, ma'am, and your vehicle registration? Do you know why I stopped you, ma'am? What's the speed limit out here on Williamson? It is 35, yes ma'am. How fast were you going? As you passed me down here right before the laundromat, I was sitting in the, uh, the car lot down here. You passed me going 50. Well, Sergeant Hoops, thank you for allowing me in your car today. I, I got to use a radar gun. I got to uh, have a nice chat, and uh, I really appreciate all you do and the passion that you have for keeping people safe. Thank you. What, what's the best part about being an officer of Roanoke County? I, I tell people all the time, we're very fortunate to live where we live. We live in a, an area with, with good people. Mm -hmm. uh, the citizens here are, are great people. We don't have a lot of serious or violent crime. You know, we are fortunate with the police department to have a lot of support from our citizens. And I, I think that's kind, of the, that's kind of the best thing is that, um, you know, the support we get, we've, we've earned that, we've obviously put in that work. So outside of your regular duties in traffic enforcement, you're also involved in some, some training statewide, right? So one of the other uh, duties, responsibilities that we have is uh, crash investigation and reconstruction. Okay. And have the opportunity uh, multiple times a year to actually teach a two-week class on the fundamentals of crash investigation and reconstruction. And we get out of the classroom a little bit and do some actual hands-on field training uh, and looking at evidence on the roadway and, and um, try to put the pieces back together. We've got two surfaces here. We've got asphalt and we've got concrete. We're gonna skid the vehicle a couple different times. We're gonna do it on asphalt with ABS and then we'll pull the fuse and do non-ABS skid. We'll see what those look like and see the difference. Then we'll skid it on concrete and then just because you guys love speed combination formula so much, we'll start the skid on concrete and finish it on asphalt. So you'll have to do both distances and do your speed combination, all right? What they're looking at now on the roadway is they're trying to identify the point where the car started to break, where the skid mark starts. And when skidding starts, it's very faint. It's difficult to see, especially on older worn asphalt. So you have to get down low to the ground, um, get farther back, and identify as close as you can the point where that skidding starts. Once they've got that point determined, they can then measure the length of the skid mark and once they measure the length of the skid mark, the other thing they'll need is to calculate a coefficient of friction um, for the particular surface that they're on. In this case, it'll be the asphalt here, and they've got a drag sled that they're gonna use to do that with. And with that given coefficient of friction and the distance that the car skidded, they can tell how much speed was lost from the time it started braking to the time the car stopped, and they should be able to tell how fast this car was going. So, <coughs> the other skids, almost all cars now, come equipped with interlock brakes, and it's a more efficient way of braking. Um, when a car skids, it's not very efficient. It's sliding across the pavement, skidding across the pavement. That's not an efficient way of stopping. So analog brakes were invented and put on cars. So that brake goes right to the point where it would lock up and start skidding, and then it releases and then goes to lock up again. It's constantly doing that to slow the car down in the most efficient way to keep it from skidding. What we've done here is we've pulled the fuse for the analog brake system on this particular car off. So we've essentially turned off the analog brakes 
so it's going to skid just as any older car would or any vehicle that's not equipped with an analog brake system. So that's what we're, we're looking at here. And we're trying to get the offset skid so you can see four defined skid marks as opposed to overlapping where there's just two marks and you're not really sure which tire caused that mark. So all you're doing is holding the, holding the level, you're eyeballing the level, telling him he's got it. You're gonna be down on the ground, reading your measurement off of it. See the tire right here, it's dirty, dirty, dirty. And you get down to here, it's nice and clean. Everything that was on here, the little bits of road, dirt and grime, small pieces of gravel, all the little particulates, it rubs off. And you get that nice clean patch and on older tires it will you know, smooth it out. They can see the car coming in, they can see it skidding to a stop, and the car is right there where it stopped. Um, obviously, in a real life situation, the car skids to a stop, it probably doesn't hit anything because it stopped. Um, you know, when we come in after the fact, it's probably been hit, moved, it's not where it actually came to rest, it got moved somewhere else. So to say, hey, I see these marks coming in, how do I verify that they are actually part of my scene, they weren't here before, you know, we can start looking at tires close up. I see, hey, there's this patch, smooth patch, on this tire right here. This is gonna match up with these marks. Sergeant Hoops, thanks for the time. I've really learned a lot about what goes on behind the scenes in the traffic division, uh, and, I, and I appreciate what you do for the community. Thank you very much. Don't forget this. Drive safely.